I guess our next presenter is, uh, coincidentally, it's going to be me. So give me just a second. I will uh, show you my screen here. I'll, uh, I'll I'll flip my webcam off so I don't uh, distractify. Yeah, keep your microphone on and let me know when you can see my, uh, my presentation. Yep, I can see it. You got me? Yep, I can All see right, it. All right, folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, a product called SolidWorks Composer. Um, and some of you may have heard of it, but never actually had a chance to see it or or know all the different things that Composer can do uh, for your company. So um, it's part of the SolidWorks family. Uh, it works seamlessly with all the SolidWorks CAD and PDM products. Um, and it's used by companies to extend the use of their rich 3D CAD data uh, across and through to other departments. It is associative based on changes made um, to the SolidWorks CAD models so that if, uh, you know, Another department is using Composer to do their job um, and engineering makes a change, their work can update. They don't have to start all over again. So, uh, and this really dovetails into a really hot topic nowadays. Everybody is talking about digital transformation. Um, but in our industry, engineering, design, and manufacturing, digital transformation um, really means, you know, having other departments not recreating data in different uh, unconnected systems. That's really step number one in digital transformation. Obviously, it means different things to different industries, but in design and manufacturing, um, we're going to talk about how to do this today. And I thought what I'd do is I'd give you four examples, the four most common examples uh, or, or use cases that companies use to reuse and, and repurpose their CAD data uh, for other departments using Composer. So let's start at the top and talk about assembly instructions. So Jesse's another one of the AEs here at Go Engineer that uh, I, I work with that's a composer expert. And we see this all the time. When we go out to companies that wanna talk about changing their process and doing things differently, and we ask them how they're doing things today, this is what we see. We see people with Word document templates that are taking digital photos and you know copying and pasting stuff and you know, here's an example of a real work instruction, you know, lots and lots of text, a couple of pictures, but look at this. Can you tell from looking at this, whether the wave washer or the flat washer goes on there first? It's really hard to tell, right? So what about this? What if you could take your actual CAD document, hit a button, and just to show you, there's a free plugin right there uh, for Composer. So now I, with that plugin turned on, that add-in, all I have to do is just save as, change my file type right here to Composer, like that. I'll save it to my desktop, and we'll hit OK. And then let me switch over to um, Composer. Here's my Composer app right there. And boom, there's, there's my file. Now in Composer, I can do whatever I want to it. I can control the display style. I can make my own exploded views. I don't have to have engineering do this for me. Um, I can add all this cool annotation. By the way, those labels, that's all coming from custom properties that come over automatically, right? Let me switch over and show you this in the free viewer. There's a free viewer that comes with Composer. So this is what people out on the shop floor would be looking at. And I can make a really easy to use user interface with buttons for next, other icons that'll link me to external documents or videos or websites so that Composer can kind of become your central um, hub of information for manufacturing. The other nice thing about Composer is it does a super job with large, large assemblies, better even than e-drawings. It's e Believe it or not, it's faster than e-drawings with large assemblies. So companies that make big machinery, heavy equipment, ag, they can do their work instructions, assembly instructions in Composer very, very quickly and easily, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. So that was assembly instructions. Our next one is uh, videos and animations. And I don't know, some of you folks listening in that are sort of hardcore SolidWorks users um, and in engineering, you've maybe had this request, you know, ownership or company leadership comes in and says, hey, we're gonna have VIPs or investors or something coming through next week. Can you make an animation or, you know, something like that? So one of the beautiful things about Composer is, and I know you can do this in SolidWorks too, it's just way, way easier to do in Composer. 
Plus, as you can see, we can do all this cool annotation like arrows and explode lines and balloons and bombs. I'm not wrestling with configs. I'm not wrestling with constraints. Check this out. Here's a really kind of dull, boring uh, assembly that we get from the CAD guys in engineering. And we can bring it into Composer, add these textures and colors, make a really cool, simple, uh, interactive uh, video to put on our website under the frequently asked questions on how to replace a battery. So really cool stuff. And we don't need the engineers to do anything, right? We can do this outside of CAD, outside of engineering. So that's videos and animations. Um, interactive multimedia. This is kind of a newer thing. Um, and I think Jesse would agree. Uh, we've had cases where people buy Composer for one of these other use cases and then realize they can do this. So if your company uh, takes part in trade shows or conventions, um, what a lot of people are doing is putting a really big flat screen TV and then making these interactive. So let's choose our handlebar color here. And you notice it's all still 3D and interactive, right? Here's another example. So if you got a really big, physically big product, it costs a lot to have a big booth, not to mention shipping it, setting it up, tearing it down. So people are making these interactive uh, presentations and having a nice big flat screen TV and uh, at the front of the booth, and then people can walk up and interact with the product. And you can use this to show prospects and customers the features of your product that make it better and unique and different than your competition. Um, and, you know, if your product has different options, whether it's positions or colors or features, um, all this that I'm showing you is all done inside a Composer. So I'm not creating some things in Composer and then having to do custom programming. Everything you just saw was done completely inside Composer. So that's interactive multimedia. Uh, last but not least, technical illustration. This is, besides assembly instructions, this is one of the most common use cases uh, for Composer. Now, this could be your, your customer service people, parts department, dedicated technical illustrators, but if your company has to make owner's manuals, operator's guides, um, you know, goodness only knows how you're doing it now, but the challenge these people face is the bill of material. Oftentimes for this kind of stuff, the bomb has to be different than the way engineering did it in CAD. And just look at this hinge assembly. We don't let somebody just order that top hinge piece. Let me add a bomb row here. We know from experience, if somebody needs that top piece, they're gonna need the whole hinge assembly, right? And so we don't let them just order that one piece, they gotta order a kit. This is what I mean by the bomb being different uh, for these types of drawings. Same thing with the seat cushion. We don't let them just order the seat cushion, it has to be properly attached to that sheet metal bracket for safety reasons. We don't want people flying out of the boat if we go over a wake. So we have that as a kit as well. Now the rest of these parts, I'm gonna let people just order you know, anything they want, screws and, and the rest of the pieces. Um, just like SolidWorks, I can add balloons automatically, arrange them on the page. Give me just a second to kind of pretty this up a little bit, move things around, make it look nice. Uh, this is worth pointing out. That one balloon right there, I can put a quantity exponent on it, just like you can in SolidWorks. Cool. Now, don't look away, don't blink. I'm gonna make a view here really quick. I'm gonna call it bomb very creatively. And check this out. One click of a button right here. Uh, and I'm going to make a web page. Boom. Just overwrite the one on my desktop, say yes, overwrite it. And here it is. This is the web page with one click that I just made in Composer. First thing I want to show you, look at how tiny it is. So it's super portable, um, super fast. Here's the web page. This is platform independent. This will come up on an iPhone, an Android phone, a tablet, a computer, a Macintosh, anything. Nope. No plugin, no, no app, no third-party app software necessary. So imagine having your product set up like this and somebody just taking their finger and touching the place of the machine where they have a broken part until they can see what they're looking for, right? Super cool. Again, touch on your phone with your finger, drill down to where you want, use your standard back buttons on your browser, back again, one more time, go down, drill down to a different sub-assembly, Again, all this is done inside Composer. I'm not doing HTML coding or anything like that. Um, we're gonna copy and paste the links to these down in the, in, the, uh, in the chat so you can see them and try them on your computer. But if you wanna try this on your cell phone, um, I've got these QR codes here. You can pull your cell phone out. If you've got a 
relatively new or recent cell phone, just go into camera mode, point it at this QR code, and it should take you to the GoE website where these are hosted, and you can show your coworkers um, how this works. So that's the end of my presentation. Thanks very much, everybody.